of God, we begin as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God our morning sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for is full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
of your Son, have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead, 
will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, we're summoned this morning to rejoice, and we have good reason to rejoice. Because from the Incarnation, one of the things that is revealed is the great glory of God. And among the glory of God that is revealed is the subject of today's Gospel, the meekness and humility of God. God who is willing to come and meet us where we're at, and to engage, to discourse, to converse. And it's in that same vein of meeting where we're at and conversing and engaging that I like to put today's gospel and today's homily, where God will meet us where we're at and to engage in a discourse. One of the things that we're at as a world is we revel today in how much we have an understanding, as it were, of the human condition. And so we revel in our social and psychological sciences. My, how we understand humanity, how we understand ourselves, how we understand and our state and condition, and therefore in that context, believe we can be our own savior. We can in fact construct our own salvation. And God would like to meet us at that very point. So let's put on our social, our sociological and psychological hat which we're every day. And I think we'd all agree, and it's reasonable, that if we were in a home where mom and dad and husband and wife are constantly bickering and complaining every day and quarreling every day, would agree from our sociological and psychological sciences, it's no place for even a child to be reared. It's no place where life will flourish, where life will be joyful. Yes, there may be instances and moments of joy, but life cannot flourish in that kind of environment of constant conflict and bickering and complaining every day. It is not good for the flourishing of life, and that's reasonable. 
Let's take that idea and take it to the world in which we live. Every day, we turn on the tube and we're constantly. The pride of media today is they fuel debate. Every day, debate, debate, debate. We feed every day on the bread of discontent, the bread of conflict, misery, distress. Oh my God, it is all we live on and deal with it every day. And we have to ask ourselves the same question. Can life thrive in such an environment where we're constantly bombarded every day with the distresses and the fear and all we're fed every day is that. And we revel in it like swines who revel in their filth. We revel in it and consider it existence. And our very learning, sociological and psychological, would say that's no place for life to thrive. And yet, it is what we're fed every day. Even when we're sleeping, it still goes on. And when we wake up, it's still going on. Every day is that life. Can life thrive in such an environment? And we with children who would be tomorrow's leaders, is this the kind of environment they should be shaped and molded by? And we believe that it's somehow living in it and dwelling in it and reveling in it, somehow Billy will be left untarnished. And the sociological and the psychological scientists will say, no, we will not leave untarnished. God will meet us where we're at, what we revel in our sciences. So let's engage. Science would say, and the law of nature would say we become what we consume. And if every day we consume this bread of conflict and division and strife and misery and distress and somehow we believe we're going to create better human beings, the law of science condemns us. That that will not be the case at all because we become what we consume. Which brings us then to the law of the spirit. That was the flesh. What St. Paul reminds us today, what we live. We live by the spirit of God. And that very law, that we become what we consume, is idealized and realized at this banquet. When we eat and drink of Christ's blood, we in every respect become what we consume. We put on the mind of Christ. We're given the heart of Christ. We become Christ to the world because we become what we consume. The law of nature finds its greatest fulfillment at the stable. And each time we gather at the stable, in the greeting that is given by the priest, the fruits of the mass is set before us. The promises of God why we should rejoice. And in the greetings, what we hear, grace, peace, love, communion, fellowship. This is it, the fruits of the Spirit. Now, can life thrive in this environment? Is not this kind of context in which life flourishes, joy and gladness and peace and rest is found, rather than feeding on the bread of discontent and misery and fear that those who feed us it daily, constantly. And St. Paul reminds us, this is what God has called us to. Communion, fellowship, peace, love, grace, and wherever these things exist, as the work of the Spirit, life abounds. But the only way we can lay hold 
of what this Mass, the celebration promises, is when we grow in the knowledge of God. And that's the subject of today's Gospel, where Christ says, learn from me. What are we learning? Today he praises and gives great thanks to the way in which God dispenses his providence. And two ways in which God dispenses knowledge of himself, what is for our comfort and peace. What he does, he reveals to some and he hides from others. And he gave thanks for it, and wisely so. He's not giving thanks simply because God hides, but in this entire arrangement in which God dispenses his blessing, his graces, it is wise. And why? The wise and prudent of the world, those who believe that being versed in worldly and stately affairs is the greatest knowledge to have. To those, this message of salvation cannot be given and should not be given because what they prize more than anything else in the world is their knowledge of worldly and earthly things. They believe that the greatest knowledge to have is to engage every day in the matters of state and matters of the world. And they believe they're accomplishing things. It's the greatest knowledge. But God does not give what is holy to dogs. He does not give and cast his pearls before swines. They have no appreciation for it. And therefore wisely he takes it. Does not give it. Because rather than exalting, they diminish God. And therefore our knowledge of God is not in a way exalted when we as Catholics engage this business daily, but rather it does what it often does. It closes the veil between God and us. But rather what God does, he reveals knowledge of himself, of his things to lowly ones. Those who recognize that such things, feeding on the bread of discontent, and misery and distress and fear. It's no way to live. And that yearning comes and God answers and say, I will then give you your rest. What you desire, the righteousness, the love, the communion, that which you yearn for, I will give it. And therefore as a consequence, we're reminded today in that very gospel, faith, is not a matter of man's intellectual or mental capacity. That may be the case for science and math and economics and so on and so forth. It's about one's mental intellectual capacity. But this matter of faith, it is a God's gift. He gives it, gives it to some, and denies it to others. And therefore the prophet Zechariah called us upon this morning that we ought to rejoice. We have reason to rejoice because God, by giving us this gift of faith, God, by giving it and granting us, makes us alive to him. And therefore we ask, and we must ask ourselves this question. If Jesus says he lays it down and faith is God's gift, his blessings to you and I, his blessing to his people, then each of us must ask, what do we do with this blessing? Are we casting it before swine? This pearl where every day God renews with us and he renews his mercy when he gives us a new day, is that how we're going to spend our day? Feeding and eating the bread of discontent and distress. Or that faith is given to eat on the bread of sincerity and truth that leads us into communion, lead us into fellowship, into peace and grace. Is that what we're doing with it? And so we as Catholics must ask this gift 
Are we using this gift? Using it wisely and prudently as it ought to be used? Are we misusing it? Are we abusing it? Are we neglecting it? Are we burying it? That's the question. Zechariah this morning, I'll leave with Zechariah because he brings us this matter of Ephraim this morning. And we can't talk about Ephraim without talking about the story of Jacob and Esau. And God will say, I did not like Esau. And for good reason. There was a blessing that was reserved for him. But he did not appreciate it. He was willing to sell it for a bowl of stew. And God says, I did not like him. Jacob, however, desired it. And rightly so, it was given. In the Beatitudes, which Christ gave, all these blessings for those who seek righteousness, it is available. For those who are burdened and labored, rest is available. But it's not one of idleness. The rest that God promised is not one of worldly idleness. What we're called as Catholics, giving this blessing, we're called to improve upon it, to use it, not to neglect it, because in the end, it will, in the end, prove to be our greatest gift as a blessing from God, as a blessing a unique and peculiar blessing. It is the means by which we enter into communion, into grace, into love, into peace, and to fellowship, not only with one another, but most importantly, with God. And where there is God, where the Spirit of God dwells, there is life, there is gladness, and there is joy. This is our gift, and we cannot sell it. We should not sell it, but we must grow in appreciation for it. As the question goes, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And the answer, as always, absolutely nothing. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with humble hearts we come before God to speak for our needs and those of the whole world. For leaders of nations, that they act with wisdom and charity as they establish controls and measures within their countries to limit the spread of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prophetic voice of the church never cease to proclaim the saving cross of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this table find in their faith the strength to meet every difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember in a special way at this Mass the people of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, your dominion is over all the earth. By the power of your Spirit, answer the prayers that we make. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. dedicated to your name, purify us, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, granted that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of his family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. command and form by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace us to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. away the sins of the world, and blessed to those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, on thy word shall enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O Lord, grant that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. <laughs>